All right. Now, in one Illustrator file, which I saved to my cloud, and I can also save to my computer, this is my Adobe Illustrator file. I have all of these different vectors options, whether they're turned on or off. You know, different wings, different heads. And I saved them all as EPSs. You know, so this was the, the last variation I did. Now that they're saved as EPSs, Yeah, I need to make it, how do you save as an EPS out of Illustrator? You go to File, Save As, and then you change the format from AI format to Illustrator EPS format. And you need it as an EPS in order to bring it into Photoshop to make it what's called print ready. So now I'm going to open up Adobe Photoshop, and I'm going to open a new file. This is important. You don't open up your EPS in Photoshop. Instead, you open up a new Photoshop file that's the size you want, and you drag your EPS in, just like we've done with a lot of our raster resource files, reference files. So I want, to, want it to be in inches. I want it to be 8 inches wide by 10 inches tall. by 350 pixels per inch. And I want to name it. So this will be SP23-1. This is assignment four. Oh, I got to put my name first. And this will be my black logo. Final. And I'll create it. So it's eight by 10 by 350 pixels per inch. You'll see that at the bottom. This is what will be inside the map. And then I'm going to drag my EPS in. This was my latest one. And it comes in as a smart object. So when I size it, well, before I size, I'll just hit return and place it. You'll see it's a smart object. Then I'll bring in my other version. And it's going to go right on top. Oh, I think I brought in the same version. Bring in the other version right on top. Did I save the same version twice? I guess so. But I could always go back to my AI file and get the other one. This is the one I was liking anyway. Okay, you can do that as many times as you want, but what you're doing is taking that smart object and then using Command T, and I'm gonna hold down Option so it stays centered, and sizing it so it looks good within that space. And sometimes you have to nudge it to one side or the other. I usually nudge it up a little bit because the eye makes things fall. And if I think, okay, that looks good. I could bring in others if I wanted. And they could, they'll go right on top of it. But that's beside the point. So now, to turn it in, we've done this before, I turn off the background, and I'm going to save this file, save a copy as a PNG on my computer. Why PNG? Because that will have an empty background. So that's good for putting onto Canvas for online. There's that PNG. If I want to check it, double click it, it will open in preview with a gray background behind it. Shows that I have no white shapes. It's all just black shape vectors. Now to make it print ready, I have to turn on the background and I have to say file uh, or layer flatten image, discard all hidden, and then I'm not going to save it anymore as a PSD file. I'm going to save it as, save as, on my computer, on my computer, not a Photoshop document. For the first time, we're going to save it as a TIFF format. TIFF is an archive format. Like EPS keeps all your information but allows you to open it in other programs. TIFF is like that for Photoshop. So it keeps all the quality 
but allows you to open it in other programs for printing. So I'm going to say save. And when you do TIFF, you always want, the default is going to be none for image compression, but you actually want LZW compression. LZW is a lossless form of compression that works with TIFFs. That means that it will save space without losing any quality ever. So you only use it when you archive, but that is now done. Now, what I do is I save that as a different name than my Photoshop file, even though it's also a different format, and I'll put the initials PR in front of it, which stands for print ready. So I'm gonna save that to my desktop as an LZW, and there it is, and I'll mark that purple, and then that's ready to print. Now, how do I do a color version? Well, I wanna get out of the TIFF, and I want to open up my PSD, right? And I can actually do that with my TIFF as well before I flattened it. But I'll show you how to do that again. So I have my PNG that goes to canvas. I have my TIFF that goes for printing. But I can also show you how to add color. But let me show you how, how we make it so we can add printing first. So I'm going to go to the class. And if you go to the home page and you go to links, there's a site in there, which is dropbox.com. And it will give you the class login and the class password for that. And it will take you here to the class Dropbox. You're going to click on digital art class files and you're going to click on flatten TIFF files to print. At the very bottom of that are instructions for how to make your images print ready. This is true for any assignment or exercise, right? It talks about LZW compression. It talks about the sizes. It talks about flattening them, right? And saving them with a different name. Under that flatten TIFF files to print, this is the only place you should load your files to print. You're going to find a folder with your name. So we are spring 2023-1, so I have my folder here. And then we just drag and drop those print-ready TIFF files in there. And then they are networked to our printers and our print computer, and then they can be printed from there, right, without any loss of quality. Okay, now what if I want to do a color version? I can't do it from the TIFF because that has been flattened, right? So this is why we also always need to save as a PSD. So I go to my folder, assignment four, and I find my PSD. And this is where I demoed it last time. You know, this is my my other EPS. So I'm going to bring in my new EPS again and size it so it feels similar. It's actually quite different than the other one. And this is how I'm going to do my color variations. I'm going to nudge it a little bit up and to the left. I can turn on the white background. Okay, now that's my black copy. If I duplicate it, Command J, turn off my black copy and double click on it, bring up layer styles, this is where I can do things with color. The first is color overlay. I can pick any color I want. So we can do campus colors. I'll start with that, with that kind of sickening, really, really bright green. It's our campus color. I might gray it out a little bit. Okay, that's the color overlay. That's normal at 100%. What if I make that only 50%? Well, then it's letting the black from the smart object come through. So these are the easy ways to add color without having to do them within the vector program. One of my favorites is doing a gradient overlay, and I can do that at normal mode. 
And I can do that at different opacities. And I can choose from a variety of different gradients, right? In general, it's best to keep it pretty, pretty simple. You can choose the angle. You can choose whether it's radial, angled, reflected, whatever you think might look cool. These are just variations. And then what's nice is that you can layer that with your color overlay. So you see how they are subtly affecting each other. The blue and the green. Then I can do things like a drop shadow underneath it. And I can adjust those settings. Play with the distance, play with the spread, how soft that shadow is underneath. Maybe I like that. I can play with an inner glow, which I don't think makes a whole lot of sense for this one, but I can also soften that out. Give it a little bit of variation. I can play with different layer styles, make it noisy or less noisy. If I really want to soften it out, I can do it like that. Take its opacity down. So it's just a really subtle inner glow. I can do an inner shadow. Which will make it look like it's cut out of the paper, which is kind of the opposite of a drop shadow. So it's weird to have both. I can do a stroke an outline around the whole thing. But unlike in Illustrator, I can choose that stroke to be on the outside. Let's make it small on the outside here. On the inside of the line, or like it would be an Illustrator at the center. But I don't want that. And then a fancy one is Bevel and Emboss. What that does is it will crease the side for you. And it will make it look subtly 3D. See, this is very subtle right now. There we go. So you can see it gives you kind of a highlight and then a shadow. And it makes it a little bit 3D. You can see how that works on the eye there. Very fancy. And then we can even add textures to it. And the textures I like best are the water textures from the defaults. And then I just like them to be pretty subtle, like they're almost just a paper grain texture in their scale and their depth. You know, kind of like this. So it just looks a little grainy. What do you think? Maybe I want the drop shadow not to be black. Maybe I want it to be the blue of our campus logo, which is like a spring blue. And then I maybe want to spread it a little bit and maybe angle this shadow slightly differently. Maybe I want to darken it. And then, of course, you can turn any of these things off. You can change them. I tend to like subtle drop shadows. So I don't want the opacity so high. Well, that looks too soft. So, you know, just playing with these. Once you're happy with it, it can be a good idea to do this. Copy your background twice. Command J, Command J. Then edit fill one of those backgrounds with black instead of white. Just to see how your color solution works on different backgrounds, right? Obviously, your black logo is not going to work all that well on different backgrounds. 
black on black does not work so well. So you see how I have a copy of my black logo. Sometimes you just want to create one 